What's up everybody, AJ here and it is the first day of um, Ani Manga Key So right now I'm here at Maya's Convention Centre So I'll be wearing these glasses and then um, I'll be wearing, I'll probably be wearing this um, cap as well Let's not forget that don't, I'll be wearing the mask as well because we're not out of the woods yet And what I mean by not out of the woods, we're still like The, the COVID-19 um, is still around even though we're like, we're in the uh, it looks like it's a, everything is back to normal, but we're still not out of the woods yet. So I would highly, so it's best to pay, pay to pay safe. I'll be wearing this um, mask as well. So um, let's not waste some time. I'm just jump. I'll be heading right into the. The queue took way longer than expected because it's day one and it's a Friday and I did not expect a ton of people queuing up at the venue. And once we're, we're the, the venue is, the, is available, the, the time to enter was longer than expected because there was a checkup because um, there was security, the, they were checking up each and every single person's bag because um, for security reasons which I can understand. This is why it took a longer time than normal to enter in the venue. But now here I am at the end of the video so I'm going to check out every single um, every single booth over there. So let's, get, uh, let's see what um, Animanga Key 2023 has to offer. Let's go! So I start things off by checking out the exhibitor booth. There's the Yodu booth, the Zen Market booth. Then there's a booth by that game company promoting their latest indie adventure game, Sky Children of the Light, which is available on iOS, Android, PS4, and Switch. Then there's the Grand Archive TCG booth. Then there's a booth where the FGC community gather around playing fighting games such as Marvel vs Capcom 3, Street Fighter 6, Tekken 7, and Guilty Gear Strive. And then there's the Comics Bay Films who are the responsible studio for movies such as Kimi no Nawa, The Garden of Words, and their latest movie, Suzume. And then there's the ASUS um, Republic of Gaming booth where they're promoting their latest product. So I just got up from the um, ROG Ally booth where they have this um, Genshin Event Challenge where one, you have to take a um, photo and then upload it on social media. And then the next step is you basically have to clear a dungeon where they, you have to clear a dungeon with the teams that they provided which has already been set for 3 minutes. The challenge was fun but, uh, but it could have been faster if they, they have a better Wi-Fi connection to be very honest. But overall it's fun, overall it's fun. Unfortunately, after all, the, the only thing that was fun was the the, 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 was the, um, the dungeon quest and that's pretty much it. Because the rest of it is a little bit of a hassle where you have to fill up the, the Google form, you have to take a photo, yada yada yada. All that just to get this, um, this time. After I'm done checking out the ASOS ROG booth, I continue my exploration of the exhibitor booths such as Hada Labo, Pizza Hut, and some other booths where they're selling anime merchandises such as Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail, and whatnot. Speaking of Pizza Hut, they also have a booth at a food vendor section along with 12 other food vendors which is located at the back of the artist alley which I will talk about it later on. And I'm glad that this year that tables and chairs for people to dine in at the event are provided this year as there were no tables and chairs prior to this event. Also, there's enemy and game steam cars and bikes located inside and outside of the event hall and these vehicles are provided by the Malaysian Itasha movement. So once I'm done checking out the exhibitor booth, I started checking out the artist alley where there's a total of 266 booths 
which took me about an hour or two to check out every single one of them. And then after that, I headed over to the cosplay alley where people queue up to their favorite cosplayers booth to purchase their merchandises and have a meet and greet session with them. Also, there's a shogi booth located nearby the VTuber alley where Shogi Malaysia teaching people what shogi is all about and how to play shogi. Once I'm done checking out all of the booths available, I head over to the stage area and it just so happened that JKT48 press conference is being held at the moment of time. Now for those of you who didn't know, JKT48 is an Indonesian Japanese idol group whose name is derived from its base city of Jakarta and the Japanese idol group AKB48. Formed in 2011, the group is the first AKB48 sister group outside Japan and adopts the concept of idols you can meet before switching to idols that will come to meet you since April 8, 2018. Got this information from Wikipedia by the way. Anyway, the press conference was being held for about 40 minutes where it's basically a Q&A session between journalists and JKT48. After that, I was basically roaming the entire venue to see if there's anything that piqued my interest. Alright, it's um, 4.22pm but hold on, let me all of this discuss first. It's 4.22pm right here at um, MIECC. Uh, as much as I would stay um, longer because uh, right now yeah, I believe it's the um, the special promos by um, Ito KSK san but unfortunately due to personal reasons I had to like leave the venue earlier than usual because normally I would leave about like 5 p.m. or maybe 6 ish around that moment around that time frame but unfortunately I'm, I'm gonna have to call it a day, um, a day for now but I'll be back on day two and let's see uh, what day two has in store because um day one even though the the queue is ridiculously long hold on let me turn on the freaking icon first because <laughs> it's kind of hot i'm sweaty right now so anyway um back um back to anime I'm kaki so day one the queue was a little a wee bit um unorganized because i have absolutely no idea where the hell is the the end of the line and they should that but fortunately, um, they managed to get things um, under control unlike Comic Fiesta where the the crowd control management sucks. Like, I kid you not. Ever since the, the very first time I um, went to Comic Fiesta to, uh, in 2012 till last year, even though I, have, I, have nev I didn't went to Comic Fiesta last year, People on Twitter were, were, were complaining that the queue management at Comic Fiesta sucks. Like, legit sucks. So I'm just glad that um, Animanga Key um, managed to keep uh, the queue management system under control. Even though the time to enter the, uh, the venue took a longer time than usual because there was a security checkup right at the entrance of the venue due, uh, due to security reasons where you are not allowed to bring in any armed weapons such as um, guns, knives and what not. Uh, so, which is why the, um, the time to enter the venue was a little bit um, longer than usual. Anyhow, so once I entered the venue, the very first thing uh, what I did is I checked out the uh, the premium art booth, the basic art booth, and whatnot. Um, I think that's pretty much um, a wrap for Anime Manga Key Day One. And I would say, I would, even though the queue was ridiculously long, the crowd is not uh, as bad. But then again, it's a Friday, and Friday is a working day, so the um, the normal crowd is practically. Um, half of the usual crowd which I normally go on uh, during the past few Animaga keys so I will expect a lot of um, people tomorrow on day 2 because um, tomorrow I believe is the uh, the mini live concert for JKT48 so I will not be surprised if there's a lot of people over there and so that wraps up Animaga key day 1 on to Animaga key day 2
Alright, so it is the second day of Animangaki. I'm on my way to the venue right now. And uh, it's very high likely that I'll be at the event throughout the entire day because tonight is the um, the mini life for JKT48. So I will say this, I'm not really a fan of JKT48 or AKB48. But I should at least check out um <laughs> I should at least check out their uh, mini life. So Hopefully um, everything goes well and as you can see right in front of the screen there's uh, already a lot of people um, gathering in front of the venue considering the fact that today is a Saturday. So let's not waste any time and let's check out what um, day 2 of Animangaki has in store. Let's go. Since I've already checked out almost all of the booths in day 1, what I mostly do in day 2 is just basically roaming around taking pictures of cosplayers and checking out performances at the stage event from the likes of Ryu Kuke, Saki Channel and Project Corsair. Also, while I was moving around, apparently there's a Tekken 7 tournament ongoing at the Insert Coin Corner booth, so I did watch a wee bit of the tournament for a short while. Then, at the JBL booth, there's a mini performance by Sky Krobo, hopefully I pronounced the name correctly, who is a top 3 streamer in Malaysia that often singing online, playing the piano and gaming, with her favourite genre being FPS. Got this information from the official booklet by the way. Anyway, if you want to catch up more of her, go to twitch.tv slash shy Kurobo. There's nothing much that I can talk about day 2, other than the fact that I met an old friend of mine who is RJ Play something, we have not seen each other for like 8 years I believe? Anyhow, don't forget to check him out as well on Twitch and follow him on other social media as well. Anyway, moving on to the JKT48 Mini Live Concert. Alright, I just got back from the, um, the JKT48 Mini Concert. Hold on, let me remove this first. Okay, so um, day 2 is basically um, me roaming the entire uh, uh, the premium booth area and the um, stage event because throughout most of the time the entire time I was basically um, I'm taking pictures um, and videos of um, cosplayers that pick my interest and then at the same time um, I was checking out some of the, the, the stage events there were some performances there was some uh, there was some um, promotion ongoing on and then there was the um, the Animanga Key um, Idol, which I didn't like watch from start to end, I was, as uh, because I was um, I was uh, I was roaming as, as I mentioned earlier, I was roaming around, but I do, uh, but halfway through right, uh, I will say this halfway throughout the, me roaming around the entire area, my back and my legs were killing me anyway, and my leg was pain man. And um, speaking of the mini concert ride, um, here's where I have to get a little bit serious because so right after um, so here's the here's what really happened. Um, right about one and a half about six thirty ish right, everyone was requested to leave the uh, the hall so that the the staff can prepare. The, if the the hall for the uh, mini concert, but here's the thing, the queue man, the way they managed the queue was horrible, like legit horrible. To the extent, right? Uh, I think I'll take, I'll talk this on my late, on my hotel later. So I need to, I need to get back, I need to get back to my hotel first, and then I will we'll talk more later. Okay, um, I'm. Back in my um, hotel room right now, so let's continue on from where I left off. Around six thirty ish, right? Everyone at the at the event hall was asked to leave the to leave the uh, the the building in order for them to prepare for the for the team, or should I say, for the staff of uh, the the animagaki staff to prepare the uh, the, the the mini live concert. And because the mini life concert starts at eight, but here's the the problem. The queue, the the queue management for the for the mini can the mini life concert was handled horribly. Like I could you know the the queue management was handled horribly to this to the extent right. By the time the the 
the door was about to open at around 8ish because there was delays when there was a wee bit of delay uh, for for some un- for some unknown reason because we were supposed to enter the uh, the 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 concert hall or should I say the, the main hall of uh, at exactly 8 o'clock but it got delayed up to like what um 10 15 minutes uh, but fortunately and here's the worst part because of the fact that the the queue management for the mini uh, the mini life was handled horribly or should I say right there was actually no queue like I kid you not there was no queue at all here's the thing by 7 o'clock ish right a lot of people were gathering at the the, the main entrance to the cons uh, to the mini life but as one of the MCs uh, said he said it loud and clear that the door will be open exactly at 8 o'clock exactly at 8 o'clock so um, he created so in the meantime right he requested every single people that is waiting including myself where I was waiting like a few just a few meters um, um, in front of the of the of the door to have a seat for now and wait until the door is open but as I mentioned earlier here's the problem there was no queue there was no queue at all to the extent right by the time everyone got up it was a nightmare it was chaos and by the time the doors have been opened people were pushing the, the, the amount of people there was tons of people maybe around um, thou, thousands I guess I'm not really so sure I don't know how many hundreds maybe maybe thousands I'm not so sure so long story short by the time the door is open, people were pushing each other inside the into the entrance, and it was totally dangerous because I was part of inside that particular crowd. And fortunately, I, I was safe. But at the same time, well, I was, but this, but I, but I have to, I have to say it out loud because this kind, this kind of situation. It's not supposed to happen because Animagi has been has been doing this um, stuff for the past like what has been fifteen. This is their fifteen anniversary, and I don't know how many um, mini life concerts they have done. I'm pretty sure they have done one last year, which was the uh, the min Mandarin Minrin. I'm so sorry if I pronounce her name correctly. Sorry, but uh, as I said, I'm pretty sure they have they have um, done uh, mini life concerts before. So I'm pretty sure. They should know what um, what needs to be done in order for for the people to enter according orderly and in a fashion uh, fashionable order. But unfortunately, um, right before the mini life concert, where people want to enter into the uh, concert, things got really out of hand to the extent that people might get injured. I kid you not, people might in- get injured. To all of the um, anime kaki staff uh, who are concerned who are watching this, I hope that in the next few uh, in the next event next year, if you're gonna have a mini live concert, please make your queue management for the live concert even much more better, and try to make it as um, as safety as possible because tonight's um, tonight's experience, I kid you not, it might be a total night. It's supposed to be an enjoy, an enjoyable um, experience for every single um, people out there, and especially to the fans of every single, to the fans of um, JKT48. What was supposed to be an uh, a memorable and enjoy experience, it could be a nightmare for them. I kid you not. So um, once again, uh, please do take note that um, I hope the. Uh, I hope the queue management system for the queue management for the concert life is um, handled way much better than uh, tonight. And I hope um, ple- because even if you tell them that don't you don't push and don't run and run, no right, I doubt most of these people will listen. So you have to instead of um, pinpointing the the problem, right? 
you have to work something that um, at least minimize the damage or some sort so that everyone can have a good time um, at the concert so every single um, concert which will, will have an um, opening night or some sort or some sort so the opening night was um, by the Crest Fall which, uh, which has been in the industry for about 11 years from, uh, from what I heard so there the opening night they were performing um, the, they starting song by performing the opening theme for um, Chainsaw Man and their second um, song they perform they perform was some um, Four Four Time from um, K On and then I'm not sh- uh, I have absolutely no idea what's the uh, what is the what's the third song they performing and then the the fourth song I believe they performed was um, I might be wrong but it's definitely a song from Red Wings I'm. I think it's Nandemu Naya. I'm not so sure. Then again, I'm not really a fan of Red Wings. I'm so sorry. And the last song was um, by um, Lisa, which is the the opening, which is the main theme for uh, Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. The Japanese dub, by the way. So they sang a total of five songs, and then comes the main act where. Um, the JKT for 48 comes in and I must say even though I have absolutely zero knowledge on JKT 48 their performance is an absolute and also also another thing right I am not a fan of uh, JKT 48 but this is coming from the person who has zero knowledge of JKT48 I will say this their performance was and was a solid 10 out of 10 enjoyment I really enjoyed their performance from start to end and to top it off right the crowd was nuts the crowd really went nuts over JKT48 so I'm just glad that um, everything. Um, I'm just glad that JKT48 receives such an enormous reception from uh, Malaysians. Unfortunately, right, as the as the name implies, JKT48 consists of 48 members. Unfortunately, only 12 of the 48 arrived to Malaysia. So fingers crossed that um, sometime later in the future, right. Hopefully, all 48 members will will somehow hold a concert some um, sometime later in the future here in Malaysia. Fingers crossed, because I I will say this once again, their con their mini live concert was an absolute enjoyment from start to end. I kid you not. And that's pretty much what I can. Um, talk about for um, the mini live concert and f- for the entire day too and so I'm gonna take a rest because I kid you not I am exhausted I, I, I am exhausted I feel like I'm already half dead so I'm gonna take a break and I'll be back uh, tomorrow for Animangaki day 3 which is the final day so so I'm gonna take a break. On to day three. Alright, it is um day three of Animangaki and it's um 2.45 a.m. As a matter of fact, I just left um, the venue because I pretty much done um I pretty much got what I wanted where um, I've watched the um, the KSK Ito um, guest performance along with the JKT48 meet and greet and um, as much as I would love to stay a bit longer but unfortunately my my physical state isn't is not allowing me to do so number one and number two right after I check out the um, the event schedule to be very honest there is nothing that really um, Pick my interest, so I decided to leave the, um, the venue way earlier than usual, which is about um, two o'clock. And as a matter of fact, right, right now I'm at my hotel, 
uh, I just checked out where I just checked out of the hotel and I'll be heading back to my home which is at e, somewhere in Ipoh so hopefully um, hopefully hopefully my journey goes smooth once I reach back home because once I reach back home I have a lot of um, video editing that needs to be done it's, uh, I'll be frank uh, this year's anime Aki is um, it's not that bad it's just um, it's not that bad because um, this is the first time in ever they brought in a, a very well known um, idol group which is um, JKT48 so but to be very, very honest right uh, and also they brought in um, comics uh, wave who are the, um, the studio that is doing um, that does the movie for Kimi no, no, Kimi no Nawa, um, The Garden of Woods and uh, what was the, the latest movie was Suzume I believe so yeah they bought it as well so but unfortunately uh, unfortunately right the only thing that really piqued my interest was basically JKT48 and um, probably um, and that's and that's pretty much it unfortunately which is why I decided to leave earlier than usual because normally um, in every anime right, I would stay right up to the end but this year I decided but this year I decided to leave earlier than usual and not and not really that right this is the first time in ever that um, Anime, anime Gaki has held a 3 day event Probably because of the fact that this and uh, they're doing it for the In conjunction of their 15 year anniversary They remind me other reasons but I'm not so sure but I'm just not really cut out for a 3 day event I'm not so sure Maybe maybe um, Alpha might pick my interest but so far I've not been to Alpha yet I just hope that the day will come where I will head to Alpha Still, Animangaki has it, it's been it's been a fun ride. It's been a fun ride. I managed to take photos of cross the years. Oh, no no selfies though unfortunately I'm so sorry. Because um I wanna go in as low profile as possible which is why I didn't take any selfies. But um I will definitely upload the those photos on my on social media so do look forward to that. And I think that's pretty much what I can talk about um this year's Animangaki. Thank you guys for watching, hope you guys have a good one. And, and take care um, as well because um, we are still not out of the, we are still not out of the um, COVID nineteen boots yet. So I hope you guys you guys don't get um, COVID once this event is over. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope, uh, once again, hope you guys have a good one. Sayonara, and I will see you guys in the next event. If not, the next video. If you here. Peace out.